Hello, I'm Inan Gafbeng. I'm the director of the National Center for Complementary and Integrative Health, or NCCIH. And today I'm going to be talking about stretching and why we, I think it's important that we incorporate stretching into our daily routine. And I'll tell you a little bit also about uh, some of the science uh, about stretching. And I'm going to be talking about some of the worst research that uh, we do in my own lab on, on connective tissue, the effects of stretching on connective tissue. So here we are we're, uh, with this COVID-19 situation. A lot of us are cooped up, feeling stressed. Um, sometimes our routines, our sort of exercise routines may have gotten disrupted. People who cannot usually go to the gym cannot do that. Uh, there's a lot of things that make us stressed. And exercise is a great way to uh, relieve stress. And um, but the problem is uh, when when we're stressed out, sometimes we don't we don't find the time to exercise, or a lot of times we spend right now a lot of times in front of computers. Our backs may be hurting. We've been wondering, can I still exercise if my back hurts? And these are all things that can contribute to even further stress. So one of the things I'm going to talk about today is how to stretch and exercise without hurting ourselves. And this is very, very important, and there's a lot of things that I'm going to be showing you today that I have learned from my good uh, friend, Miranda Esmond White, a friend of mine from Montreal, who has been holding a, the, one of the longest uh, TV series on PBS called Classical Stretch. And a lot of the principles that, that she incorporates in some of her exercise routines, which I have myself been doing for a long, long time, are methods that, and ideas and principles of how to stretch safely and how to exercise safe, safely without, without hurting ourselves and how, how not to aggravate injuries uh, by stretching and how to really do it so that we look forward to exercising and we feel better afterwards. So let's first um, start with a, just a little uh, example of this. So this is something I like to do when I wake up in the morning and very, very, very gently um, turn your head to one side and move your up the arm in a circle. Like this. And then do it on the other side. And notice how this feels. You can see that if you if you try to do this in a very, very relaxed way, um, Miranda uses the example of moving like a rag doll, not trying to force it too much. Just move your arm very, very, very gently and notice if you feel any pain, any stiffness as you do this. And if you do, try to feel, is there any muscle tension that's contributing to the stiffness? Sometimes, especially when we spend a lot of time at a computer with our shoulders hunched and, and our backs sort of crunched forward, we can develop a lot of tension in the shoulder blades, between the shoulder blades, in the shoulder muscles, the trapezius here, and the neck. And by paying attention and noticing where is it that we're feeling tension as we're doing this and trying to relax those muscles as the tension hopefully will decrease. Sometimes you may feel that the tension is right where you're moving or it may be somewhere else in your, in your body, maybe the other side or maybe somewhere down in your back or your hip and try to release as much tension that you can and try to make the movement a little bit bigger a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. Now, this is very important to, first of all, warm up into a movement gradually and not just go straight into a, you know, a strong movement. In order to get the, 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 the joints used to moving and also to make sure that we do the movement in a way that is the, that, that is the most relaxed. Now, we'll move into some more you know, strengthening a little bit later, but at the beginning, it's really important to pay attention to how we feel when we do a movement. Uh, I really enjoyed watching uh, Dr. Amelie's uh, uh, video cast last week on, on uh, mindfulness because this mindfulness is really about paying attention to what we are doing. And what we're trying to do here is moving by paying attention and therefore making the movement in a way that, that we can then go, keep going further into the movement without getting into trouble. So I talked about muscle tension, but when we when we stretch, um, we don't we're not just stretching our muscles. Um, we're stretching also the connective tissues 
that are around the muscles. And connective tissue is something that's really quite remarkable. It's a tissue that goes all over the body. It's a network. It connects everything with everything else in the body. You can literally draw a line uh, in your body, going from any point of your body to any other point in your body via a path of connective tissue. It surrounds every organ, every blood vessel, every nerve. It's, it's, it's quite extraordinary. And the, the relationship of the connective tissue to the muscles, it's also very, very important because the connective tissue is around the muscle. So um, when sometimes when we can have even minor injuries to the connective tissue can cause inflammation. And we know, uh, research has shown, that inflammation in connective tissue can lead to, to pain. The other thing that happens when we uh, have an inflammation, even for a minor injury, is that the layers of connective tissue can sort of adhere together and sort of get stuck. And so imagine two layers of connective tissue, like two slices of bread with some like mayonnaise or something between them. Normally, the slices of bread are supposed to be able to move freely past one another. But sometimes, imagine instead of mayonnaise, you have like thick peanut butter, where the two layers are now always moving sort of together in parallel. And that's not good because it restricts our range of motion. Sometimes also what happens is that there's these tiny little what we call microadhesions. And, and instead of sort of thick peanut butter, thinking about a whole bunch of tiny little pieces of like double sticky tape that are holding the pieces of, 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 of bread or, or connective tissue right together and preventing it from moving. So what I want to do now is I want to show you how to uh, release those double sticky tapes. I call it like clean, cleaning the cobwebs. So try now to redo the movement that we did before, turning your head and moving your, your uh, arm up and down. But this time, try to relax as much as possible Slow down the movement as much as you can and see if you feel anything sort of let go anywhere in your body. You may sort of feel a little pop somewhere. And I'm not talking about a loud pop, like the kinds of popping that comes when we crack our joints or something. This is a very, very subtle. This is just an area where you feel all of a sudden, oh, something has just let go. And now I can stretch more. Now, the other thing I want to mention that's really, really important. If you feel any pain during any of this, stop first of all, back off, and, and sort of slow down the movement and try to see what can you relax, maybe somewhere else in your body, maybe it's on the other side, maybe it's in your back, to, to do the movement without pain. If you're still having pain, do the movement softer, go back to the rag doll and do it very, very softly and very, very, very gently. And if you can now relax and do the movement with less pain, you can now start to explore a little bit more. Now, I just felt something pop right here in my shoulder. And now I can actually expand and move the movement. And this should not hurt. This little popping that we feel should not hurt. This is just connecting. Imagine the little layers of double sticky tape that are just kind of letting go and allowing your fascia, your connective tissue to stretch a little bit more. Order. Now, the interesting thing here is that um, these little adhesion muscles, imagine you have a muscle that has been contracted all day, you've been sort of hunched over and your muscles have been sort of tight and, and shortened. Now the connective tissue during that time is not really moving much because the muscles are holding it, because the muscles are tense. If you start now relaxing the muscles, it helps the connective tissue to relax, but it works the other way around too. If you uh, are able to stretch the connective tissue and release those little, you know, uh, sticky tapes, then the muscle can now uh, expand and, 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 and stretch more. So it kind of feeds on itself. It, it, it feeds on itself in a bad way. It means that the more you shorten your muscles, the more your connective tissue gets sticky together, the less you can, you know, won't move. And then it also works the other way around. The more you release the, the connective tissue, the more you can relax your muscles, and then the more connective tissue can stretch. So it's, it's, it's really kind of uh, something that you can work with. All right, so let's just do this movement again. This time, pay attention. Try to move really slowly and see if the movement's getting any easier and more comfortable. Okay, now we're gonna talk a little bit about breathing. Because breathing is important. 
Um, breathing is something that obviously we do, we do naturally, but sometimes we tend to hold our breath. And breath holding is, is another form of mus muscle tension. It's really kind of not letting the muscles that control breathing to just do their thing. So I was, I'm going to invite you to pay attention to how you breathe. Don't force anything. Just, just pay attention. We're just guide you through a couple of movements. Generally, when, when we like to, uh, it's, it's a good idea when you do movements that expand your rib cage, such as this one, for example, put your arms in front, open, breathe in, and then breathe out when you, when you roll back down. Do it again, breathe in, and breathe out. Now, you could, some people like to breathe out through your nose or breathe in and out through your mouth. It doesn't matter. Just, just do it the way it feels more comfortable to you. And just try to pay attention to how you're breathing this. And you'll see as, as you type, pay more attention to this, hopefully your breathing will become more uh, flowing and easier. And especially also if you try to relax your back muscles and relax you know, the muscles of your, of your trunk. And that will also help with this breathing. So I'm going to now talk about another aspect of stretching, which is always, which is also very important, which is to, you can actually strengthen your muscles to, while stretching. And there's a really good trick to this. It's by applying an invisible resistance. So imagine now that you're trying to push away something heavy. For example, imagine I have a big armchair here and I'm trying to push it away. So I'm going to push against the armchair, but because there's no armchair, I would fall over, right? I have, to, I have to do something else to not fall over. So I'm going to now push my hips in the, up, in the opposite direction. So I'm pushing away the armchair, and I'm pushing my hips to counterbalance right, the armchair, the, the force that I'm pushing against the invisible armchair. And what that does is it creates a, a sort of a resistance right, between the force and the counterforce. And this resistance is, uh, is, is traveling all the way from my hips into my shoulders, and I can feel the tissue stretching as I'm doing this, I'm going to do it on the other side. Push against something invisible, and at the same time, push your hips in the other direction. And I hope that you can find, feel as that this kind of path of tissue between your shoulders and your hips that you're actually in the middle of stretching. Now, at first you should do this very carefully and gently, right? And then gradually, if, if, if you feel pain, just back off. Like a lot of people have a lot of low back pain. This is a fantastic exercise for releasing your low back. So don't push hard at first. Just push very, very, very gently and try to relax your muscles as you're doing this. Breathe. Just apply all the other things that we just talked about. If you, if you feel tension anywhere else, if you feel tension in your shoulders or in your upper back, try to release that. And then do the other way. And gradually, you can try to gradually increase the amount of invisible resistance that you apply to the movement. And then, this is called an, an eccentric contraction. You're contracting as you're stretching your muscles. This is very, very strengthening to the muscles. But it's also safe. If you do it in a way that, that does not cause more pain, then it's very safe. And, and strengthening your muscles in, in, in a way like this, is, it's safer because you're applying your own resistance. You can control it. It's not like you're trying to pull or push an, an actual weight. You're providing the resistance in your body. So now we've talked, we, we, we've sort of done a lot of things, right? We, first of all, started moving like a rag doll. Look for any muscle tension. Release any muscle tension that might be there. Then try to move very slowly, but stretching a little bit more and trying to remove those cobwebs, try to undo those little sticky tape, you know, between the, the fascia and stretch a little bit further, a little bit deeper. And then we also practice applying resistance. So I'm going to be taking you through a, just a couple of sort of exercises that I like to do in the morning. And also other times during the day, like you can you can do this little routine. Um, it, it's very short, but uh, but you know you can also do it in tiny little pieces. It's a really good idea in between meetings, for example, if you've been sitting at your computer. The nice thing about these things, you can do them anywhere, um, and just get up, do a couple of stretches, just five minutes, and then sit back down. You know, hopefully you'll see that it makes a really big difference 
when you go back and sit back down, how your posture is when you're sitting and you feel your chest is more open. Chairs are really a problem <laughs> for humans. We're not really meant to sit in chairs, but we do that a lot. And, and so um, I really recommend also if you have a chance to sit yourself with a standing desk that you can alternate between standing and sitting, that's very helpful. Some of these exercises you can actually do at your standing desk, which is really nice. And it really helps to, to maintain your energy throughout the day. You don't feel quite so drained uh, by always being in the same position all the time. Uh, posture is really meant to not be static. It's really meant to, to, to be dynamic and flow. Um, so I'm going, to, I'm going to show you a couple of these uh, little exercises. As you do them, just keep thinking about, about what we just talked about. First of all, move very slowly, gently, Don't forget to breathe. Now breathe all the way up. Up. And breathe out. And the same movement, but turning, turning your head a little bit to the side and stretch your shoulder. Shoulder, movement up, and let's do the pushing, now push a little bit higher so that instead of pushing your hips out, Push your rib cage out. Now push even higher, this time at, sho at shoulder level, and now feel the, the stretch between this hand and this part of the shoulder. Now don't forget, if any of this hurts, just back off and do the movement more gently. Now, I'm going to do a little bit of sideways stretches. Put your feet a little bit further apart. Move sideways. It's very important to stretch all the sides. Very, very gently at first. Let's, let's do it once gently, and then we'll put a little bit more oomph into it. I'll stretch a little bit further, try to see if anything needs to relax. As you're doing this, push into your, push your foot into the ground. And that way you're, you're now creating this resistance between your, between your leg and your shoulder. Okay, now we're going to push over to the one side and then gently sweep in front to the other side. Do it gently at first. Sweep in front to the other side. And let's do it a little bit deeper. Sweep, sweep in front. A little bit deeper. Sweep in front. Now, push your to one side and move around and pushing 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 and push into your feet push on one side and move around now push in front and push into your foot at the same time push in front and push into your foot at the same time now push one hand to one side and one hand to the other side. And really feel a stretching between your two hands through your shoulders. Again, feel the stretching between your two hands through your shoulders. Okay. Now it's really important also to stretch your calves. So put one foot a little bit behind the other, like this. Okay, with your foot straight and then 
Push now in front of you and at the same time push your back foot into the ground. And now bend your knee and do the same thing. And change the other foot. Push your foot into the ground and bend and push in front. Now bend your knee and do the same thing. Show you a couple of little fun exercises from Tai Chi uh, and, and, uh, and, and, and Qigong. This is, these are exercises that are kind of meant to sort of loosen up your joints. You just loosen up your hands, your wrists, your shoulders. You're in a lot of nice, good, good cracking here. You can also Loosen up your ankles. Try not to fall over. Okay. Now here's a, a nice fun one. So start, bend your knees just a little bit. And then swing your arms from side to side. Just gently. And then when you're ready, you can swing up like this. I look like a pendulum. And then when you're ready, just let it go. Okay? Now here's another one. Put your arms to the side like this. And then swing around and let your arms Walk around you. It's very important to do some twisting. Let your waist just really be free and twist. Now I'm going to show you one more exercise which I really like doing, which is to strengthen the muscles of the back, which we sometimes get very weak if we're a lot of times in this kind of hunched over posture. I'm going to go back to the lunge position where you put your, you, your arm you, over to the side like this. Join it with the other arm and then move your arms just a little bit higher and then do kind of like imaginary backstroke where your arm kind of stretches out behind you and try to first do it really gently at first. The two arms. And then one back stroke behind you. And if that is not causing any pain, try to do it a little bit with more resistance. Try to kind of almost like you're pushing something imaginary down, back behind you. This is a very good exercise for, for strengthening those muscles that, that really kind of help keep our posture upright and so that we're not you know, collapsing like this. So finally, at the end, I think it's really nice to just kind of move around, do a little jumping, and just kind of shake it up. So I hope you've enjoyed this session. I know I think that you know these are little exercises that once you really understand how to move, you can also use these uh, as as kind of stretching and warm up exercises before you go and do something aerobic like running or riding a bicycle, so that your muscles are warmed up um, before you actually go and do something that is a little bit more strenuous and repetitive. I think a lot of times what happens when people will do a repetitive exercise like, like running and they start having pain somewhere, um, their muscles kind of seize up and they start and they're, and they're not fully relaxed and that's when can, people can really get into trouble. Uh, and so uh, when something like that happens, it's good to sort of stop what you're doing, saying, okay, let's just take a little break, you know, say you're a little running or riding, by. let's figure out what's going on. You can do a couple of movements like this, a couple of movements like this, Try to loosen up your back, and then you can go back to your, your uh, activity and see if it actually become easier. 
um, so that you can um, exercise without hurting yourself. A, a lot of people, when they have back pain or, or shoulder pain, they're afraid to exercise because they think that they are going to get worse. And a lot of times they do uh, get worse because I think there's this kind of mentality that uh, unless, unless, you, unless it hurts when you exercise, it's not doing you any good. And that's one, one way to, to think about it that's not, that's not right. Um, it's, it, it should not, you should not exercise if, it, to, it, you know, if, it, if, if, if you're getting, if you're causing more pain while you're exercising. That's not a good idea. You should always kind of reduce the amount of, 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 of work that you put into it until you can do it gently and without pain, and then you can increase the amount of work that you do. Um, the other opposite is not good either, to sort of not exercise at all and become afraid to move. And so if you can learn how to move safely without hurting yourself, you will get more confidence that you can exercise without uh, causing yourself to be in more pain. So it's really a good idea, no matter what you do, uh, to learn these sort of basic, basic techniques. So um, I hope you enjoyed this session. I hope you're feeling good. Um, you, uh, if you want to read more information about this, uh, go to the NCCIH research blog uh, page and uh, there's a recent uh, blog about uh, stretching. And uh, again, have a good day and be well. Bye-bye.